Hello, and welcome to Lecture 5 of the Human Energy Use Topic Unit in Phys 2104. In this lecture, we'll look at what is likely the most controversial power generation method, nuclear power. Power generation using nuclear energy is done via nuclear fission. Perhaps someday we'll also be able to make use of nuclear fusion, but that day is not yet, and so the rest of this video will focus on fission. In fission, we start with some large nucleus, say uranium, and it is hit by a neutron. It then splits, typically into two, and additionally extra neutrons are emitted, typically two or three. The large pieces that it splits into are referred to as fission products, and there are many possibilities. So, for example, let's just suppose that this fission product is cesium-137, and let's figure out what the other fission product is by using this reaction equation. In case you aren't used to this notation for nuclear isotopes, let's have a look at it. So before each letter representing the elements, you see a pair of numbers. The upper number is the atomic mass number, and it is just a count of the protons plus neutrons in the nucleus. It's roughly equal to the mass in atomic mass units, but I will stress roughly. For our purposes in these calculations, it's not good enough just to multiply this number by uh, the atomic mass unit, you need to actually look up the correct atomic mass. The lower number is called the atomic number, and is just the number of protons. Both of these numbers are conserved. We don't have any neutrons or protons being destroyed in this reaction. And so we can now solve for A and Z, the atomic mass number and atomic number, of the unknown element X. So, we do that, we have 236 total nucleons involved here, and that allows us to solve for A, which is 96, and we have 92 protons, and that allows us to solve for Z, which is 37. And you can look that up, for example, just by looking at a periodic table of the elements, and see that element number 37 is rubidium. So the unknown fission product here must be rubidium 96. Now I'm going to get you to do the next step in determining how much energy is released by this one fission reaction. So I have looked up all of these masses. These are the masses of the nuclei involved. And if you just add them up, you can find that the mass before and after is not quite the same. There is a change in mass. It's negative because mass is lost of about 3.1 times 10 to the negative 28 kilograms. That doesn't sound like much, but no, that's actually about one part in a thousand of the mass of the system that is lost here. That lost mass is turned into energy. I'm actually uncomfortable stating it that way. The more into this you get, the more you think of mass as just one form of energy, but that's often how this will be stated. We now use this very famous equation, E equals mc squared, to convert the lost mass into the amount of energy that it is equivalent to. So you do that and find what the energy released during this reaction is.